Hello and welcome to the Fighting Spirit Podcast. As always, I'm Jason and I'm here to go over the retrospective for UFC Fight Night Copenhagen where Jack Hermanson was defeated by Jared Cannonier. This was a fight I was not able to call correctly. I wasn't able to call many correctly, but I said skip it. Don't touch this card. Don't touch an international card. So I feel happy about that. I'm not happy about the results, obviously, but I am happy that I told you guys to skip it and uh, skip it. Hopefully you did and you did, uh, oh, you know, okay. There were some fights I I saw winning. I was a little surprised and some fights that uh, I, you know, just didn't go our way and we'll talk about them. Here's the show. <laughs> So I was not able to call our main event. That one ended up not going very well for us. So in the early second round, Jack, uh, sorry, Jared Cannonier just ends up putting on a beautiful display of combination punches to crush Romance into the mat. He goes down and lays on the ground and pound. Beautiful symphony of shots come down and the combination city all day. He shuts the door on Hermanson. Hermanson did look pretty good going into the second round. I thought maybe his best stuff had already been given up, though. You know, we saw him go for those takedowns. He wasn't able to hold Cannoneer down. He wasn't able to execute his amazing ground game quite like he wanted to. And, you know, once we get into the second round, I think Cannoneer also knew that maybe that was the best that Hermanson, the Joker, was going to have on offer. And he ended up shutting the door very early into the second round. So hats off to Kill a Gorilla. He put on an amazing performance and was a great win for him and a bad call for me. Uh, and the next one, probably a really terrible call. Uh, Marco Madsen, uh, the Olympian, uh, silver medalist from Denmark, goes in and defeats Daniello B- Belliardo. And I actually thought that Belliardo was going to win this one. Uh, so the numbers pointed to him. Uh, you know, if you look alone, I think at... Mark's, you know, experience in grappling sports, you'd just call me crazy, but I didn't know how he'd be able to handle a striker at this level, you know, in the UFC. And I think they, you know, gave him kind of an easier guy to fight. Uh, Belluardo, I, I thought was going to fight a little bit better. He's got a baby on the way. I thought he'd, you know, have his dad's strength up basically to, you know, pick up a win, get that extra money and uh, go back home and see his kid be born. And it just didn't play out that way, you know. I I think he was very concerned about being taken down, thought a lot about it. And Madsen, once he got him down, put on a, you know, Khabib-esque smash city, you know. He just kept the elbows coming, kept the fists flying, and he ground Belluardo down until we got a TKO stoppage. And Belluardo looked a little disappointed in himself. You know, maybe he should have thrown a little bit more hands, could have potentially hurt Madsen earlier on and you know maybe made him a little more hesitant to come in but not how it played out he wasn't able to execute that kind of game plan and he took an L as did we then we had Gilbert Burns defeat Gunnar Nelson this was a win for us you know I didn't think Gunny was going to be able to hang with Burns and we found out that uh, you know Burns basically outclassed him everywhere I thought Burns was a little bit better striker that karate stance really got chopped up those leg kicks by Burns were just phenomenal you could see the welting on the Gunny's leg his calf was pretty bad and you know Gunner just did not have it that night. He didn't quite have it on the ground. He executed no takedowns. Um, I didn't think he, except for the end of the first round, he did have a little bit of top control, but with the minimal amount of time left, he just wasn't able to execute uh, his, you know, great game plan that he normally is able to, and we found him outclassed. So we pick up our first W here on that one. Then in one that I did not want to call correctly, but I did. Iwan Kubaleta, Kudalaba, defeats Khalil Roundtree Jr. And I thought Roundtree just really honestly didn't throw any leg kicks. Maybe he was afraid of being taken down, and he was four times in the fight uh, till he was, you know, basically ground and pounded on the mat uh, and, and put down. Um, yeah, I would have liked to have seen some great leg kicks from Roundtree. I think Kudalaba was just too much for him, too much aggression. He didn't have enough time to find rhythm. And I think that was the game plan going in from the yell, you know, the yelling that he, you know, did at the at the weigh-in to the way he basically walked right across the cage getting in Roundtree's face. 
Uh, he, you know, he was going to show a lot of aggression early on, and that's exactly how it played out. Uh, one thing I would have liked to have seen with Kudalaba, though, and this is going in my time machine, is that level of uh, fighting against Glover Teixeira. I mean, here's a guy who couldn't beat Glover Teixeira, but just smacked around Roundtree. I don't know. Guys have off nights. I just, you know, I've lost money against Glover Teixeira, and, you know, I bet on Kudalaba back then, so... Hey, is what it is. Uh, I like Kudalaba. I think, you know, we have uh, good things for him at light heavy. But, you know, it's a question of how long you can intimidate guys at this weight class. Uh, you're not going to intimidate John Jones in that way. He's going to he's gonna poke your eye out. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you're just not going to do that. So we'll see how far up he goes. You know, I can potentially see him fighting Johnny Walker maybe at some point. We'll see how that plays out. All right. And our next contest Ovin St. Pru defeats Michael Olenstruck, and I called this one incorrectly. Uh, Olenstruck in the first round was walking Pru down. He was uh, all on him. He got some knockdowns. He'd wobbled OSP, but nothing really looked like it was a, a haymaker, a shutdown shot, uh, a lights out, shut the door kind of moment. It, he was, you know, just taking years off his life, chipping away. And I thought that Olin Struck, you know, was, was basically going to be able to do it in the second round after the way we saw him box his face off. But ultimately, that was not the case. St. Pru had, uh, you know, kind of Homer Simpson his way out of the fight. I think Olin Struck kind of punched himself out by the time we get into that second round. And o- OSP takes advantage, gets him on the mat, and executes a great choke, that uh, v- Von Pru choke, you know, where he just takes his shoulder uh, and just jams it right into the artery in the neck. Of uh, of Michael Owenstruck and uh, he shuts the door on him. He's able to you know use that big frame of his uh, great technique. I can't quite describe the choke, but uh, you know he he came in great technique and he was able to execute an excellent choke uh, decision. Sorry, submission victory. Uh, so we we're not able to call this one correctly. I thought that you know hey maybe, maybe Owenstruck catches one extra shot in there. Uh, he puts him out, but hey, it's just the way things play out sometimes. You know, this turning of the tides happens a lot in MMA. In the next one, not able to call correctly, Nicholas Dalby defeats Alex Oliveira uh, via unanimous decision. So in this one, I, you know, th- there's there's a little bit of controversy, I think, to it. You know, um, Dalby, a hometown kid, obviously, you know, he has the side on him. Uh, but Alex Oliveira in the third round had... Dalby on the ground, on the fence, and I thought he was doing good work, and I thought he was going to maybe pick up a TKO. We know how how tough and grinding all of air is, and he gets stood up. The referee comes over and says, not doing work, get up. And Dalby turns the table, gets him down, executes grinding upon his own self. So they took a position away from Oliveira that I thought he had earned very squarely, and it looked like he was doing work, and... They, they, they took it away from him. And I and I know I've said, you know, things that go back and forth on this whole idea of standing guys up, not standing guys up. But I thought there was enough work here to justify leaving them down. I You know, there have been other situations where I have said that maybe they should be set up, but this was not that. I thought that Alvaro was, Alvaro was doing good work. And, uh, yeah, it may, maybe a little bit of the hometown crowd influenced it, but that's why I stay with these international cards. You have to. You never know how things are going to go when you're dealing with a hometown kid and, you know, uh, fishy officials from outside of America a lot of times. You know, so, anyways, get that one wrong, but it is what it is. Another one I was able to get right, though, John the Welsh Wrecking Machine Phillips uh, knocks out Alan uh, Amadovsky in 17 seconds. So I said that Phillips was going to get back to his KO ways. He did just that. He did it in 17 seconds. There's not much to say about it. Uh, guy put on amazing performance and picked up a great win. Hats off to him. I love your, uh, love your name too. Uh, and it's not the last time we'll have to bring up a Welsh fighter here. We had another debut fighter, uh, at the start who also put on an amazing performance. So we'll get to him at the end. And it was a, it was an L unfortunately in his case, but we pick up a W with the Welsh wrecking machine. In the next one, we were able to call correctly. We had Mark Mood Muradov defeating Alessio de Kirkio or Circio. <clears throat> and this was, uh, you know, decent fight. I wasn't able to actually see this one. In fact, I wasn't actually able to see the rest of these. So maybe I'll just kind of go over them in quick order instead of trying to make, uh, you know, more out of it than I really can. So uh, he outstrikes him pretty handily, picks up a unanimous decision victory, and we pick up a W. Um, not quite our last W on the day, but uh, 
getting down to the end of it. Uh, then another one, we had Ishmael Nurdiev defeat Sayu Baha Zahara. And uh, Nurdiev, the story of this one is takedowns, ground and pound. And Sayer is just not able to get into his rhythm. And then we had a little bit of controversy in the Giga Chikadze versus Brandon Davis fight. So uh, Giga actually did win, but I think they announced that it was a draw on the card. Apparently, they just didn't do the math right. Uh, it ended up being a split decision victory for Giga on the official score sheets. That's what they record, but was originally announced as a draw. So I'm happy to see that uh, we did get that one correct. Uh, and one I'm a little bit shocked about, Lena Landsberg defeats Macy Kiesen. I thought the Kiesen was going to steamroll Landsberg, but every time I've bet against uh, Landsberg, she seems to come up on top. I am surprised. Maybe she's found, uh, you know, some will to win in women's MMA, and uh, maybe she is better than her record, and uh, her stats kind of appear because she has been on a nice little win streak lately, and I'm really happy for uh, for Lena, to be perfectly honest. You know, she got that great win over Tanya Evanser, great win now over Macy Kiesen, she put a little streak together, and hey, who knows? Maybe, uh, maybe she will uh, come out as the projected winner in her next bout. Uh, but she uh, dismantles a very hungry Macy Kiesen uh, via unanimous decision. Then in one, I was very sad about Mark Jacasey defeats Lando Venata. Uh, Venata's taken down four times. Jacasey is able to execute a great takedown game, and Venata's just not able to stay standing and make it the kind of contest that he wants. So he picks up an L, and I really would love to see more from this great young talent in Lando, but uh, he just has not really been able to keep things running. Uh, he... Yeah, it's tough. He had that uh, fight with Tony Ferguson very early in his career, probably too much for him early on, and we just haven't really seen him bounce back. He he looked like such a good prospect coming in. He just hasn't lived up to his potential, and I wonder if they've just they've just given him too many hard fights uh, early on in his career. So, hey, uh, I hope he able I hope he's able to get back out there and get better. Um, I hope maybe he can transfer gyms. I'd like to see him do something that really can radically change his career because I, I don't want to see him continue to get L's. Um, you know, might be time to hang it up if he's not willing to, I think, change gyms and put a new direction on his career. But we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm not Vanetta, and I, uh, I'm in no position to be giving him advice, but that's, uh, that's what I would personally do if I was in his shoes. And the last one we were not able to call correctly, we had Jack Shore defeat Nolene Hernandez. And Jack Shore is a great Welsh prospect. He looked amazing. He had a uh, submission via rear naked choke victory. He got the performance of the night money. Uh, outstruck him like mad. Took him down. Ground him down. It was a one-sided ass-kicking affair for sure. And Jack Shore picks up a great, great W. So we didn't go so great on the night. I think we went, what, 5 and 13? Yeah, 5 for 13. Uh, well, 5 and 13. Uh, but 5 for 13 contest, giving us about a 38 uh, yeah, 38% accuracy, so not very good on this one. Uh, I said skip the international cards, and uh, I guess I was right about that one. Next week, we do have the Australia pay-per-view. I am a little more confident about that one, so I think we'll be able to uh, make some better predictions with that one. We'll see how that one goes. I feel like I just have not really been able to capture any kind of streaking lately as far as getting some wins, so I'm hoping we can get back to those winning ways. Uh, next week and we'll see how things play out but uh, anyways we'll get into housekeeping here if you want to get in touch with the Fighting Spirit Podcast, you can write us at fightingspiritpodcast at gmail.com. You also can send me a tweet uh, at MMAFightPix01. We're also on YouTube. We're also on Spotify and your favorite podcast platform of choice. And as far as the YouTube one, I actually didn't get any views on the post this last week. I don't know if this uh, Cannoneer Hermanson fight just wasn't popular or... I didn't post it enough to social media, so people just didn't see it. I don't know. It, it's like uh, this fight just wasn't trending that big and uh, just didn't get any views. Whereas when I had the Khabib card, I mean, I had not that it's a lot of views for, for anybody on YouTube, but I had like something like 39 views on the YouTube page, um, which compared to like the you know normal amount of views I get at this point, uh, it's pretty big. So just a comparison, zero to you know 30-something, uh, pretty, pretty big magnitude there. But uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, let's see. Be crunching the fight soon for the Australia card. Hopefully getting that on Monday. Um, if you probably can tell from my voice. I've just been sick, so the liquor review or beer review that I was going to do, uh, just I've been delaying it. I want to be able to actually do 
you know, a good job and give it justice. If I can't smell or taste correctly, I just don't want to do a review right now. So fortunately, those are getting pushed back. I'll try to get back on track with those as soon as I feel that, uh, you know, my health is in a way and my taste buds are in a way uh, that I can actually do it justice. And so that'll be coming sometime in the near future. I'm going to have a day off this week coming up, so maybe we'll be able to do it then. I'll hopefully be feeling better. I am feeling better slowly but surely, and I'm hoping that, you know, another few days and I'll uh, kind of be back to the old self. So anyways, until I speak with you again next time, happy fight picking.